Hello, everybody. We are about to start now with Michael Catanzaro. He works for the web browser team in Italia and also for the release team in GNOME. And he's going to talk about migrating from JH Build to Build Trim. So when I submitted this talk to Guadic, uh to the papers committee, uh, my thinking was that I'd be giving a tutorial demonstration here on how to, uh, for, for those of us who are already familiar with using JHBuild, uh, how to start using BuildStream instead. Uh, that's not what this talk's going to be about. Uh, this talk's going to be about uh, how the release team has migrated from JHBuild to BuildStream for our release management. Uh, I will be I'll have some words about the development, the developer experience of BuildStream at the end. Uh, we were, we were kind of thinking it would be a good JH build replacement, but it's, it's not there yet. So I'll, I'll be uh, talking about that today. Uh, first of all, though, uh, let's talk about JH build. Uh, for those who are not familiar uh, with uh, the, the tools GNOME developers uh, have been using for many, many, many years. Uh, to productively hack on GNOME. Uh, first of all, it stands for the James Henstridge build system. Uh, I've never met James Henstridge, but uh, I'm told he's in the audience today. Hello, stand up, stand up, wave, wave to everyone. <laughs> so I'm really glad right now that when I, when I developed these slides, I decided to be nice to JH build. <laughs> So, no, it's an honor to have you here. Uh, JHBuild has served the GNOME developer community very, very well for a very long time. Uh, it's, uh, uh, so, uh, oh, I can see my slides down here. That's useful. So, um, the, basically, it does two things for GNOME developers. First of all, it figures out what you need, what dependencies need to be built for you to build your new thing. For instance, I want to build the latest version of Epiphany. It will, um, it will go out and download all the dependencies, GDK, glib, WebKit, it will build the latest of everything. Uh, and, and when it works, it works really nicely. Um, so that's, it's a great way to, have, uh, to, to be sure that you're testing the latest code and can find problems with the latest code that won't be apparent if I'm depending on old distro packages for everything. Uh, uh, also, um, it installs all, all of its code under a separate prefix, its own private prefix in your home directory. So instead of, you're, you're not clobbering your own system packages and destroying your operating system install when, when you're, when you're uh, working on them. So it seems pretty basic nowadays, but a lot of people who um, are not using JHBuild are, are still doing that. Um, uh, to sometimes unfortunate results. I got a bug report a few, like a week ago, from someone who couldn't run Epiphany because he had replaced his system copy of libicu because he was trying to try out the, some newer ICU f internationalization features in WebKit that need a newer libicu. And, well, uh, he's, he's, he's trashed his uh, operating system now, <laughs> right? He's just tried to install his own libicu. That was a bad idea. Um, so, yeah, it allows you to hack on GNOME without scrambling your computer. And it's the uh, command line syntax is very simple. So good things about JHBuild. Uh, this is why I've been using it for a very long time. Uh, however, uh, there's some bad things about it too. Uh, so uh, the module sets uh, we use uh, to, 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 to build the software are very frequently broken. Um, I'm not going to go into details about the different sorts of problems we have, but suffice to say is that when newcomers tried to build GNOME, whether a simple application or complex application, uh, no matter what, they are going to run into problems, uh, especially if they're using anything, any operating system that's not called Fedora, because JHBuild, uh, it, it's not, uh, the, the, there's no host isolation. The, the dependencies you have installed on your host OS matter. Uh, the, um, in fact, the order that you build dependencies matters because uh, say, uh, say a particular module is missing a dependency declaration, but you previously JH build built something else that 
depends on the required module, then, then you'll never notice that the, the dependency is missing in the module set. You'll never notice that it's broken. Even though it works well for you, it's not going to work for, for a newcomer. <sighs> Uh, yeah, we had a f we had a few other problems. Uh, f for instance, uh, these are these are more minor issues. So what I just mentioned were th were the biggest problems we have with JH build. Uh, some some more problems with newcomer uh, 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 with getting newcomers building them uh, with JH build. We had different tutorials providing different advice that were competing with each other and. Uh, we, we tried to find some consensus in the GNOME developer community on sticking with one tutorial to advertise for newcomers, but we were only partially successful. So that, that, that causes problems from time to time. Um, newcomers would try to skip installing required dependencies, for instance, uh, because uh, they, let's say there's some build problem with some dependency of some module, so they'll try to use JH build build one to build everything they need individually. And then they get really confused when required dependencies are missing because JH build build didn't work. So what I would always prefer is that if something doesn't build properly, you file a bug report. But that's not what happens in practice. People would just try to get along with just just building individual modules one by one when they could, and it didn't it didn't work so well for newcomers. Uh, also on release day, yeah, GNOME never builds. Uh, trying trying to um, trying to build the latest tarball version of everything against it, it, itself. Uh, there's there's always um, it, it's always a challenge to to to, to get that working. Um, so that was the status quo for a long time. Now let's now let's uh, start. Uh, about five years ago, uh, five years ago, things started to get even worse. First of all, uh, we uh, got GNOME Continuous, which has been, on the whole, a helpful technology because it's reduced uh, build failures in GNOME on the whole. Uh, but it's a separate set of build definitions to maintain. So now we have not just the JH build module sets that are officially what GNOME has released for a long time. We also have the continuous manifest, which is using completely different uh, configure flags for every module. Um, it's using uh, it's using its own uh, compiler flags, etc. Uh, and, and it's building. It's not. It doesn't. Uh, it's 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 very different from the JSP module sets in that each individual module is expected to build in one particular order. So we know that with GNOME continuous, uh, GNOME builds successfully if you build everything with the same flags, configure flags is going to continue, and if you build everything in the same order, which is not useful for us on release team, because that's not uh, the set of constraints. That, that's not, the, that's not uh, the same as what we're releasing with stage build. So Continuous was able to find and resolve a lot of problems, but uh, not, not, uh, not enough for our needs. Uh, still, uh, we're better off with Continuous than we were before. Uh, the, the manifest is fairly simple, so it's not a huge problem to maintain it. Uh, also, Emanuele Bessi, who's not here this year, I don't think, um, um, uh, he, he's been taking care of it uh, for us. Uh, Emanuele joined the release team last year just to recognize uh, the work he was ar he's already been doing on Continuous for a long time. So he's been taking care of that, and that's great. Um, but yeah, now we have two different sets of build definitions. Uh, enter Flatpak. Flatpak. Uh, also very good for GNOME, but it's posed some challenges for release team. Uh, the GNOME runtime is uh, lightly maintained to be to be generous. Uh, the release team we we've had the intention of, of taking up maintenance of the runtimes, but we can't we can't maintain two now three different sets of build definitions. So that's not really happened yet. Uh, it's it, it's constantly broken. To to be blunt about it. Uh, whenever uh, we release a new version of WebKit, I'll then try to get the latest runtime version building it successfully again. Uh, and it normally takes about a week as I just try speculative changes, push to get, see if it builds the next day. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's not a very great, uh, not a very great workflow. Uh, the, 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 the runtimes, I, sh I should have said this first, the runtimes are generated uh, from a separate flat pack builder build manifest. So now 
We have the JH build module sets, the continuous manifest, and the flat pack builder manifest for building the GNOME runtime. So it's three different sets of build definitions. No good way to check the build status because un unlike FlatHub, we don't have a build bot instance running for, for, uh, to, to show us whether the GNOME runtime is building or not. Instead, we have uh, uh, just a directory interface uh, accessible over HTTP. And so I'm, I'm look at the, the different builds and uh, click into each one individually to see, oh, what build in this build did the runtime build? Did it fail or not? Uh, as a matter of opening the build log and scrolling to the very bottom. So the, if it takes more than 30 seconds to load, that's good because that means it probably built successfully. <laughs> if, if the build log loads in less than a second, then oh, then you know, it's a problem. Uh, still no security updates. Um, uh, that's an unrelated problem. Uh, I was gonna complain about that, but I'm running low on time for the presentation, so I'll skip over that. Uh, the, but that, that's, that's an issue we need to figure out. Uh, uh, getting security support for a flat pad run times. Uh, and yeah, now we have three different sets of build definitions to maintain. So, uh, we don't like having to do the same work three separate times. So two years ago, we met at Quadex, the release team, and we agreed, well, that, that's not good. We need to be doing, we need to have one set of build definitions, not three. Uh, last year, uh, we discussed with CodeSync and agreed that the solution would be to replace all of the above with a build stream project, uh, uh, which is GNOME Build Meta. Uh, and in January of this year, we made the switch. Uh, release team is no longer working with JH Build module sets for the first time in as long as I remember. Uh, I've only been around in the GNOME community for about five years, but in, in that time, the release team what we release on release day is a JH build module set containing uh, references to all the different tarball versions that were current as of the release date. Uh, now that's changed. We're releasing a build stream project instead. And for release team, it's been really great, uh, wonderful, but uh, uh, for like everyone else, everyone else is still using JH build, right? <laughs> uh, so um, in January, when we made this announcement, our intent had been to uh, quote unquote deprecate JHBuild and try to get the developer community uh, who's depending on JHBuild to, to move on to BuildStream. That has not happened for various reasons. So yeah, I mean, we're all familiar with, with XKCD, right? Now we have four sets of build definitions to maintain. Yes. Okay, so. Let's talk about BuildStream. Why, why did we want to move to BuildStream? Uh, so if you ask CodeSync, CodeSync has developed BuildStream. Tristan, Tristan, stand up, wave. <laughs> Face the audience, wave. Okay, so if, if you ask him about it, BuildStream, he's gonna have a completely different set of things to, to, to promote, things that he's gonna say he likes about it. Uh, here's what I like about it. Uh, first of all, it has host isolation. So uh, your build, whether your build succeeds or fails, doesn't depend on what software you happen to already have installed on your host operating system, which is absolutely essential for us to be able to recommend the build system to newcomers, because if it doesn't have host isolation, it's just not gonna work. Um, next, uh, each build runs in its own build sandbox. So. Remember when I said with JH build, whether the build succeeds or fails often depends on what else you've built previously when there's missing dependencies. With BuildStream, we know whenever there's a missing dependency because it won't build at all. It doesn't matter what order you've built things in before. It's either gonna work for everyone or no one. Uh, thanks, and that's thanks to host isolation as well, but also, also each build runs in that separate build sandbox. So that's useful. So um, that allows us to know whether newcomers will actually be able to succeed in building or not. Um, we split the runtime up into two parts. There's the base system, which is the free desktop SDK, if you went to that presentation earlier today. Uh, that serves as the, the, the base for everything that's not provided by GNOME, and GNOME build meta is our set of build definitions on top of the free, des on top of the free desktop SDK. It depends on the free desktop SDK. Um, so that's intended to replace the JH build module sets, which we've already deprecated and are no longer maintaining. So great, now we only have three sets of build metadata to maintain. It's intended to make, replace GNOME Continuous, 
Uh, when that's done, we'll only have two sets of build metadata to maintain, and then GNOME SDK images and GNOME Apps Nightly is a flat pack runtime and apps generation. Um, that is uh, uh, highest priority right now is replacing those with GNOME build meta so that uh, we won't have to maintain that build metadata either. Uh, that's more problematic because, as I, I'm, as I mentioned earlier, we're having a lot of problems with keeping the, the GNOME runtime generation working right now. Um, so getting rid of that separate uh, set of build definitions will help a lot because we are maintaining uh, GNOME uh, build meta. We know that it works on a daily basis because we've got continuous integration set up to make sure it, everything builds uh, each, each day. Uh, so building the GNOME runtime from Zap will be wonderful. Uh, the person who's been working on that I want to recognize, uh, I don't think he's here, Abdurahim, Abdurahim, he's here? He's here but not in the room, okay. Well, if you see him, thank him because this is, it's, he's done a huge amount of work on this and the, it's uh, very pleased with that. So um, hopefully we'll be able to get rid of GNOME SDK images in the very short term future. Uh, yes, it can build flat packs. Uh, obviously, we can't replace uh, we can't replace the GNOME runtime uh, generation. We can't replace the GNOME flat packs generation with GNOME build meta unless it can build flat packs. And yes, yeah, developed by uh, Abdurahim. Abdurahim. No, no, no. Tristan was saying he just walked in, but no. He was wrong, sorry. False alarm. Alrighty. So, here's my highly insufficient migration guide. This is the talk I originally planned to give uh, here in two slides. Uh, if you want, uh, the command is bist instead of jhbuild. Uh, to, to, by default, it builds from the official release metadata. It's not gonna build what you have locally. So if you're making local changes to your code, you need to open a workspace with bist workspace open. Um, uh, the other big difference is the build commands are inverted from jhbuild. In jhbuild, it builds all the dependencies, the latest versions of everything by default, downloads all the latest code. In build stream, the default behavior is more like jhbuild build one. Uh, so if you want the jhbuild build behavior, you have to add that track all uh, flag uh, to the bist command, uh, which is a better default. Um, uh, JHBuild shell to, to get in a shell inside the build environment. It's a little more complicated with BuildStream. Uh, there's two versions of the shells. There's a normal runtime shell which contains only the build results. So, that, so um, you won't have access to your build directory unless you pass the hyphen hyphen build flag. Um, if you do that, then you have access to the build directory but nothing's installed on the system. So uh, you have to make sure your application works when it's not installed. Uh, in theory, all applications should. In practice, almost all GNOME applications are broken when they're not already installed on the system. If you're trying to trying to run them from your build directory, you're in making changes to installed files. Uh, those changes aren't actually going to be noticed by application unless you actually reinstall the application. Uh, so with BuildStream, with nothing installed at all, say you're trying to use like G settings. Uh, if you don't compile the schemas in your build directory, it's, it's just going to crash because the setting is not installed, it's not there. Uh, so that does require uh, some small modifications to, the, to your build system files. Nothing, nothing intense, but, uh, but you will need to make those changes to do any local hacking. Uh, so yep, that was like two minute walkthrough of the main differences between BuildStream and JHBuild. Uh, there's not going to be any demo uh, because that's not the talk I want to give today. Uh, but um, there you have it. Uh, the slides are going to be on the internet somewhere, so you can check these if you want to. And we've replaced the the JH. Well, we we have now both a JH build introduction and a corresponding build stream introduction on the GNOME wiki, which will walk you through this. This is obviously not a walkthrough. It's not a tutorial. It's a cheat sheet, right? If you want to start using build stream, I highly recommend the walkthrough instead. So how has this worked out for release management? Like I said earlier, it's been awesome. Uh, we now know for sure whether GNOME is building or not on any particular day. GNOME build meta is the ground truth. If your module is broken in GNOME build meta, it's broken. We can't say works for me anymore because we have a system by which the build result is going to be the same no matter what your host OS is. Uh, so that's great. 
the developer experience has not been so great. So let's talk about that. Uh, so we sat build stream was ready to replace stage build for GNOME development. Um, but uh, I'm going to take some of the blame for this. Uh, I didn't, uh, didn't, uh, I, I agreed to this before I had gotten used to using Buildstream for daily development, uh, which was uh, not a responsible uh, approach to take. Um, uh, so th th there's, there's various problems uh, currently, uh, some, some more serious than others. Uh, don't, we don't need to get into them all today, but just, just suffice to say it needs more work before we can recommend it to GNOME developers. So what should we be using instead if JHBuild's deprecated? Okay. Here's some of the options we have for, for GNOME development. This build stream I just told you, it's, it's not, not ready for your daily developer workflow yet. With, with Tristan and CodeSync have been admirably trying to get it there uh, and making a lot, of, a lot of good progress. but. Um, it's not ready yet. So, uh, flat pipe builder. This has been, uh, I'm sure you've, uh, you're probably familiar with Carlos Soriano, his efforts to, on the GNOME Newcomers Initiative to get newcomers introduced to GNOME development using flat pipe builder, which has been, in my opinion, quite successful. Um, you can, uh, uh, if, if, if you download GNOME builder, open GNOME builder, it, it's got all the different, uh, sorry, the different icons for the different GNOME applications. You can uh, build them uh, easily using Flatpak Builder, and you know it's going to work because of the host isolation again. Host isolation is what makes this a better developer workflow. Uh, also, you don't have to build all the dependencies in the runtime. So it's really great if you're, if you're just uh, hacking on a, a, a particular application and you don't need to make changes in the runtime or to other non-bundled dependencies. Um, or, or, or even other bundled dependencies. The, now, we have some disagreements in the GNOME community as to whether it's a good workflow for, for when you do need to make changes to libraries or not, uh, which I think most serious GNOME developers need to do on a pretty regular basis. For instance, let's say you're working on uh, like a GNOME Mines, just a particular example app. You find a bug with the scores dialog. You need to make a change in the GNOME game support to fix a bug with the scores dialog. How do you test that change against GNOME Mines? It's difficult to do with Flatpak Builder. You have to, you have to uh, bundle the, the library locally. Uh, you have to add it to the, to the manifest. You have to use uh, uh, the, the, the Git repo. You have to replace the Git repo URL with a file URL to your local Git repo. That Flatpak Builder manifest is almost certainly under version control, so you have to make sure you don't accidentally commit your changes to the manifest that you made just to be able to, to do this. So I think we need more work here before we can recommend that workflow uh, to, to, uh, for more than just newcomer development. Uh, hopefully, hopefully, uh, other, hopefully we can see some improvements in that regard because it is an exciting technology, Flatpak Builder, to be able to develop this. But I, I don't, it's, it's not there yet for me. That's, that's not going to be a productive workflow for me, in my opinion. Flapjack uh, is like a JHBuild style uh, tool uh, developed by Philip Cimento. Um, uh, basically, it allows you to do exactly what I've just said. It, it solves the problem with Flatpak Builder. Uh, you, can, you can make your modifications to the runtime uh, similarly to how JHBuild works, the problem is it's really slow because it has to rebuild the whole runtime. Um, yeah, uh, when you make a change to an application, it does a new build from scratch. Um, so it hasn't really caught on. Um, and I'm not sure if it will or not. So it leaves us with, with JHBuild. And that's what I'm still using for my daily development is JHBuild. Uh, it's, it's not suitable for newcomers by any means. Please don't recommend this to newcomers, but I've yet to find a good developer experience with any of the alternatives. My recommendation is to write your own JHBuild module set. Again, obviously, that's not a suitable recommendation for newcomers, but uh, if you do it, then you don't have to use uh, the, uh, the upstream JHBuild module sets, which, as I mentioned, release team is no longer maintaining. And uh, that works well for me if, if you take the time to do it Right, you know, module set that works for you. Um, it's not, it's not a great, not a great 
status quo. I don't have a great recommendation here. Everything has problems. Uh, I think BuildStream and Flatpak Builder are close to the to the developer workflow that we want, but just not there yet. So I don't know. I don't I don't have the answers. I don't have a developer experience recommendation for us today. Uh, I know that we need Gnome Builder to be central to that developer experience. So what, what, whatever we wind up doing has to have good integration with Gnome Builder. Uh, Flatpak Builder almost does today. Um, JHBuild does. I, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I don't have the answers. Um, so my recommendation is to go forth and argue about this. I'm interested in hearing uh, discussions at the Squadic about, about how, uh, what we think we should be promoting for our developer experience. Questions? One, two, three, four. Yeah, unfortunately, we only have five minutes for questions. Okay. So, so we're uh, going to have to make the questions kind of quick. Owen. So not, oh. not, try again. Okay, so let's see. Um, I don't want to take up the whole five minutes, but maybe you could like, you know, give like one sentence what are the th top three problems with BuildStream, because I'd be interested to know like what kind of issues there are currently. Okay, I'll give you my top two problems. First of all, the, um, it's, it's the same problem with Flatpak Builder. Uh, exists in BuildStream in that it's kind of hard to work on an application and a dependent library at the same time. Uh, so if you need to make a change in the library and see how that change affects your application, you, you've got to switch from one workspace to another, uh, um, opening one shell to another at least, and opening the shell takes time. It, it, it's just a little awkward. Uh, so, so we need a way to, to work on that simultaneously. The biggest problem right now is that there's no limit to the size of the artifact cache. So if you use it for... for if, if you try to use it, uh, you're going to find, uh, I find that it fills up my one terabyte hard drive in about a week. Uh, so, so yeah, the, the, the cache size limit needs to be uh, smaller than that. Uh, the, but, uh, so that's been a high priority for Tristan to fix for a long time, but apparently it's actually quite tricky for some reasons I don't understand. So I'm sure he can go into detail about that after the talk. Uh, next question. Zishan. Oh, no, okay, Alex. Uh, so it's a microphone, so sorry, Zishan, you're next. So do you have any particular ideas how we could make Flatback Builder easier to work with or better? Like I, I have a PR where we can say like dash dash enable equals feature one and you can have sort of optional things. Pick this other git source instead of, or tarball or whatever. I don't have any specific ideas, but I think it's doable. I, I think, um, I think I, I, we just need to think about it and come up with a plan to make, to make this common workflow a bit easier for developers using Gnome Builder and with, with, the, with the Flatpak Builder manifest checked into Git. So we don't want to make yeah. local changes to that, I don't think. Uh, and I think if, 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 if we were to make some changes to facilitate that workflow, I think it would be a good option. Um, so I think it's close. Uh, and so let's, let's do, since we're low on time, let's do Zishan's question and then I'll, we'll give the mic to Tristan because I'm sure he's going to want to respond. No, I, I just wanted to ask why is it that uh, GH build, build 1 is the opposite way in, in build stream that it by default only builds the... Why don't we give the mic to Tristan? <laughs> he has a mic. I don't have the answer to that question. <laughs> it's just... <laughs> He, he can answer it. <laughs> Give him the microphone. <laughs> Thank you, Jonathan. I'm not sure exactly if it's uh, JH, JH build build one only builds one module, and I'm not exactly sure I understand how it is opposite either, to be honest. Uh, so, so the reason I say it's opposite is JH build build one is equivalent to BST build in that it just builds, uh, the, it doesn't track all the changes. It, it doesn't, doesn't track, download the latest versions of all the latest code. But right? does it ensure that your previous dependencies are built? Uh, no, JHBuild does not. Neither. So okay, okay. But but usually you have them already. Keep in the a microphone. Static, close usually you have them already in a static uh, sandbox, right? In your in your optional prefix, you already have them, so you build one, build one, and you're not upgrading everything every time. Yeah, JHBuild build one is great if you've already run JHBuild build once for the thing you're building, or if you, if you really know what you're doing and you have all the dependencies you need installed on I, your host. I, so I, 
the answer. I think I, I okay. phrased it wrong. The question. I, I meant like why is like when you say build, it only builds one module, right? In with the build stream. No. Okay, that's no, what I no. Understood. That's it's in a different way. Exactly. The the way he phrased it, I was a bit confused as well. Okay. Basically, the default for build stream is to assume that your project produces something that will be bit for bit reproducible, right? So that means that the default is to be deterministic and to consider that you're revisioning in your project every single commit SHA and exactly what's going to go into the build. But for GNOME development purposes, we want non-strict mode and we want uh, to always build the latest, right? But it's not always the perfect workflow. Actually, I'm more interested in usually I will make a track all once, right? And then I'll have all my refs. And then I can play with, I want to change the ref of this library and then test this application. And I have those in my project.refs, right? So it's a bit of a different mentality on the, in the sense that we're focusing on, determinism, on determinism first and making enough project productivity features so that developers can build the latest and we can segment stacks so that groups can work together such that, for example, we're building GNOME build meta on top of free desktop SDK runtime right now, and it's separate projects, and so we have static refs from the free desktop SDK, but we only use the latest refs for the GNOME modules when we do a track all like that, right? Well, that's basically, does that answer your question? I guess. So we're running really low on time, Tristan. This is anything else you want to say in a minute or less? Can't, okay, so um, you've been using BST shell dash dash build a lot. Yes. And it never was a workflow that I had anticipated, but I think that, w or would I be right to say that if staging at the time of launching a BST shell was snappy, that would basically fix that? Uh, well, it would, it, it would be a, it would be good for, yeah, staging to be faster. That would be Because basically if and, and if you made some improvements to that recently, but I, I think there's still a ways to go. Yeah, maybe with caching, maybe there's tricks that we can do. With, with JH build, when you enter the shell, it's instantaneous because it's just setting a bunch of environment variables. But with build stream, it's doing a lot more in the background. It takes some time. Yeah, exactly. So if that was snappy enough, you would be able to develop your library, build it, not with a dash dash build shell, which is intended for debugging the, the actual build process. Yeah, I could, I could use right? uh, and then the build stream build, build command one, and instead of entering it. the shell and then manually, manually okay. building. So I, I'm, I'm interested in, in feature improvements, definitely. Um, OK, so uh, uh, I'm out of time here. So one last thing I want to say before I go. Normally, I come to Guadec and give a presentation about my work at Agalia on WebKit, Epiphany, GLab networking, all that cool stuff. Didn't do that this year because the, the changes with the release team, uh, release management, build stream, I thought this would be more interesting to the GNOME community this year. But uh, Agalia is still around. We're just still doing web browser work uh, that's relevant to GNOME. If you've got any questions about the company, you can come find me and ask, or Kavaris, Wave. Uh, also, my buddy from Agalia, uh, we'd be happy to answer any questions. All right, that's all.